out as CEO, Rosemary Sinclair. For those of you who don't know her, Rosemary has had a distinguished career working across telecommunications, technology, energy, media, and the education sectors, driving transformation, high performance, and advocacy. And prior to joining Outer 18 months ago, Rosemary was the CEO of Energy Consumers Australia, responsible for enhancing community sorry, consumer advocacy in the national energy market on issues including price, quality and security of supply. So we're thrilled she now leads Alda, helping to innovate the .au domain and support Australia's digital economy. So Rosemary, thank you for your time today and over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Sophie. And thank you to everybody who's joining us today. Um, we really appreciate your interest in .au Direct, and I hope that today's session is going to give you a greater understanding of it, um, why we're working hard to introduce it, and the value that that new namespace will unlock for Australians and internet users. In my remarks, I'd like to briefly touch on ALDA and the .au domain generally and then discuss our recent announcement on .au Direct, why we're launching a new namespace, and lastly set out the benefit um, that that will bring to Australian internet users. So let me talk about ALDA. Um, we're a small not-for-profit company limited by guarantee. Uh, our full name is the .au Domain Administration. From top to bottom, we're fewer than 40 people, but we have a very big mandate. We manage the .au domain name system, or DNS, to use that bit of jargon, which is the system that directs .au web traffic. Many people liken the, .au, uh, the domain name system to a phone book for the internet. When you enter a domain name, such as Auda, .org.au, the DNS, domain name system, directs your computer to Alda's website correctly from anywhere in the world. In addition to directing traffic to websites, the DNS is also responsible for ensuring emails reach their intended destination. Alda performs this function under terms of endorsement from the Australian government. And we also have a formal agreement with the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN, which is the international body that coordinates the Internet's naming system and defines how the DNS functions. That's the basis on which we administer the .au country code top-level domain. Given that much of us today's business and social engagement occurs online, it is easy to understand why the DNS is considered critical infrastructure. The domain name system helps to connect Australians and other internet users to the digital economy. And to give you a measure of how many people rely on this critical infrastructure, the .au DNS currently responds to 3.3 billion inquiries per day from people connecting to .au all across Australia and from the, around the world. In addition to running the DNS, ADA is also responsible for creating and administering the .au domain name licensing rules to ensure that .au remains a trusted and secure environment. An example of this is our strict eligibility rules and validation requirements to ensure that registrants are who they say they are. Other popular domain extensions do not offer these security measures. As a result, we know that .au domain experiences significantly lower levels of online abuse than the global average. While we're very proud of these already low levels, our new strategy aims to improve these further and to ensure that we lead the world's best, best practice country code top level domain security. 
ultimately, we know that this is good for consumers and they value it. And that will continue to help Australia's digital economy to thrive. Australia's domain name system was launched in 1986, so it turned 35 this year. This slide provides you with an outline of the .au domain name structure. As you'll see, it operates as a hierarchy. A domain name represents a registrant's position within the hierarchy and can include organisational hierarchy, such as com.au, net.au and org.au within the .au domain, and location hierarchy, such as .au, meaning Australia. Different rules apply to different domain names and also to different namespaces within the .au domain. For example, com.au signifies the domain is registered to a commercial entity with an Australian verified presence. Under ALDA's licensing rules, to register a com.au, the domain name must relate to the registrant's business name or the service the business provides or the goods that they sell. To register an org.au name, you must be a charity or not-for-profit group and must be able to provide evidence of this status. ALDA, for example, holds an org.au domain name. The .au domain has grown, has grown steadily over the last 35 years. This growth has been accelerated by COVID as hundreds of thousands of businesses have moved online and established a digital presence. In the last 12 months, we've seen nearly 30, uh, pardon me, we've seen net registrations rise by nearly 160,000 names meaning that there are now more than 3.3 million .au domain names. And most of this growth was driven by registrations of businesses in com.au. Very interestingly, we saw that about 85% of the businesses registering in com.au in the first half of the pandemic were in fact established long before the pandemic. Of these, about one in three businesses were more than 10 years old. Older businesses that recognised that if they didn't transition online, they wouldn't see out the pandemic. What this means is that while we would have preferred not to have encountered the pandemic, COVID-19 has proved to be the single biggest lever for digital transformation since the advent of the home computer. And Alder is very proud to have supported this transition. With such demand for .au names being driven by business, it may come as no surprise that com.au is far and away the .au domain's most popular namespace. It currently accounts for about 90% of all .au domain registrations and is followed by .net.au and org.au, which holds 6% and 2% respectively. This high demand has led many to ask, well, what's next for .au? And this is something that Auda has been thinking about with stakeholders for a number of years. We recognise that the .au domain needs to keep pace with community change and expectations. It should factor in international innovations and it needs to grow and evolve. We see that websites are often reached by mobile phone devices, like phones and tablets, so shorter domain names are really helpful to users. Small startups that are considering entering the market and in their earliest phase may not have registered an ABN and therefore would not be eligible for a com.au. Companies undertaking short marketing campaigns 
often set up a microsite with a short and different domain. Individuals with hobbies or those wanting to register their own names for email addresses are also seeking new options. AUDA seeks to support these needs and expectations through innovation in .au, ensuring that it remains fit for purpose. So it should come as no surprise that we were thrilled to announce recently the next evolution of the .au domain, which we are calling .au Direct, and that will be available to the public from the 24th of March, 2022. So let me talk now about what is .au Direct. .au Direct refers to domain names registered directly before the .au. For example, Bowder.au. When the new namespace becomes available next year, registrants will have the option of registering using the new namespace. The new .au direct names will be short, simple and effective. They will be easy to recognise and easy to recall. Australia is not the only country to make direct registration available. It exists in other jurisdictions around the world. For example, .nz for New Zealand, .fr for France, .eu for the European Union, and .uk for the United Kingdom. These namespaces have proved popular in those different countries. In New Zealand, .nz accounts for 20% of total registrations in the New Zealand domain and is growing faster than the traditional co.nz. In the United Kingdom, .uk makes up 12% of UK domains under management and accounts for 16% of new registrations for the UK domain. In Australia, Alda believes the new .au direct namespace will be of interest to new and existing registrants. The new namespace will deliver a wider choice of available names to registrants in the .au domain. It will allow registrants the choice to register shorter, more memorable domain names and provide registrants with a choice of new names that are easier to type and display on mobile devices. Importantly, anyone with an Australian presence or who can establish a connection to Australia will be eligible to register for a .au direct name. There are no additional allocation criteria. So this means .au Direct will be available to a wide range of potential registrants, including, for example, individuals who may want an eye-catching email or web address, micro-businesses taking the first foray from an online marketplace to their own established web presence, associations establishing a new presence, or established businesses who want to create a microsite for marketing or other purposes. And I'm sure there'll be many other uses for .au direct namespace. And we're really looking forward to seeing the innovative ways Australians approach this new namespace. As I mentioned earlier, the decision to launch .au direct and the related eligibility process has been some years in the making. Outer appreciates that some would have liked to see the namespace up and running much earlier. But the timeline to launch underscores that there was a significant amount of work to be done before we could launch the new namespace. Operating as Outer does in a multi-stakeholder environment, it was important to ensure that there was adequate consultation with users and that a demonstrated need was evident. So our consultation process was extensive. 
and included the 200, uh, 2015 Names Policy Panel, which recommended the introduction of .au direct registration after considerable public consultation. They suggested that further work be done on the allocation method. In 2016, a survey of 97,000 randomly selected registrants showed that the majority of participants supported the introduction of direct registration and considered that there would be benefit to users of the .au domain. The Outer Board took this research into account when deciding to proceed with .au Direct. In 2017, the Board convened a further policy review panel to focus on recommendations about how best to implement .au Direct. And in 2018 and 19, there was further consultation conducted by that policy review panel. Following all of which, the panel ultimately recommended the priority allocation process for the introduction of .au Direct. Outer's board approved the introduction of the new licensing framework in July 2020. And throughout 2020 and into this year, Outer has progressed with the preparatory work to facilitate the introduction of the new rules and the implementation of .au Direct. The new framework of rules was launched in April 2021. And in August this year, the AUDA Board approved the launch date of .au Direct as the 24th of March 2022. We still have some six months until launch, and that time is going to be very important. It will allow AUDA and our accredited registers the time we need to get all our systems ready for the priority allocation period and to help with awareness and information about the .au direct namespace for registrants and the broader community. Now that I've set out what .au direct is, uh, the benefits and our progress towards implementation, I'd like to spend a few moments now on the important priority allocation process. The first question, of course, is why is there a priority allocation process and how does it work? Starting with the why. The reason is because more than one registrant may be eligible to apply for the same .au direct name. It became apparent through AUDA's consultation process that long-standing existing .au domain registrants should be granted priority access to the new .au direct name that corresponds to their existing name. It was clear that the community felt that existing registrants, that is those who have previously invested in registering .au domain names, should not be advantaged by others who may not currently hold a domain name, but would be interested to register a .au direct name that someone else, someone else already holds as a com.au or org.au or net.au. If we take Auda as an example, Auda holds the domain name auda.org.au. Over the last 24 years, we have built a digital presence under this domain name. We use our website under this domain name and associated email addresses to communicate with a broad range of stakeholders. So at the launch of .au Direct, some would say it would be unfair if the newly available AUDA.AU direct name was immediately available to anyone in the market. So AUDA consulted with its stakeholders on a fair and efficient way to manage this process. The resulting process, the priority allocation process, was co-designed with stakeholders. It provides for existing, pre-existing .au domain name registrants 
with the opportunity to apply for the exact match of their existing name in .au Direct during the priority allocation period of six months from the 24th of March, 2022. From that day, all names in the registry prior to launch will be put on priority hold and reserved from being registered as .au direct names for six months from the 24th of March to the 20th of September, 2022. Existing .au domain name registrants, such as Auda, will have the first opportunity to apply via an accredited Auda registrar for priority status to register the exact match of their existing name in the new .au direct namespace. So, Auda will apply to register auda.au. You can expect that your registrar will contact you well in advance of launch about this very matter. On this slide, as well as the launch date of the 24th of March, 2022, and the end of the priority application period at the 20th of September, 2022, you will notice the cutoff date of the 4th of February, 2018. I'll come back to that date shortly. In most cases, there will only be one applicant and the matching .au direct name will be allocated to the applicant soon after they apply for it on an initial one year license period. This is because in the majority of cases, there will only be one registrant who can apply for a reserved .au direct name as they are the only holder of its match in any .au namespace. This is referred to as an uncontested name. However, as I noted earlier, we recognise that in a small number of cases, there may exist more than one registrant that is eligible to apply for priority status for the same .au direct name. These are contested names. While we estimate that this will occur in fewer than 4% of cases, we've developed a clear and effective process by which to manage these contested names. Allocation will be determined by the original creation date of the existing names and the priority cutoff date I mentioned earlier of the 4th of February, 2018. If you registered a .au domain name before the 4th of February, 2018, you'll be in priority category one. If you registered after the 4th of February, 2018, you will instead be in priority category two. A simple example, Jane holds the name getyour.com.au. Joe holds the name getyour.org.au. In this case, both Jane and Joe are eligible to apply for the new .au direct name, getyour.au. But because there are two eligible applicants for the new name, the allocation process differs. If Jane registered before the 4th of February, 2018, and Joe registered after this date, Jane as a priority category one will have priority over Joe, who is a priority category two applicant. And in that case, Jane will be allocated the new name. However, if both Jane and Joe registered at a similar time, and both are priority category one applicants, 
then they will have to negotiate between themselves. The name will not be allocated to either party until both parties reach an agreement. Their existing names will continue to operate unaffected, provided they keep their registration, registration details up to date. If Jane and Joe registered after the 4th of February 2018, they are both Category 2 applicants. And in that case, the name will be allocated to the applicant with the earliest creation date of their original name. We believe that these contested cases will be relatively few among our 3.3 million domain names. At the end of the six month priority allocation period, people will be able to take up the new .au direct names where no applications have been received from existing holders of matching names. These uncontested names will be released to the market and available to new registrants. I appreciate that if you're new to .au direct, it can take some thinking through, and in particular, the details of the priority allocation process. Be assured, however, there is plenty of time to consider the process before launch on the 24th of March next year, and we at ARDA will be playing a role in providing a lot of communications uh, to help people make their decisions. You'll be able to find out more from a range of different sources. If you already hold a .au domain name, your registrar will be in touch directly and will have information on their respective websites. Alda's website has a number of resources and further information on .au direct and you'll be able to read that at your leisure. Between now and launch day, Alda will be speaking at a number of forums to explain the process and answer any questions that people might have. And we will also be launching a broadly based campaign in early 2022 to raise awareness of the new namespace and the benefit it delivers. Lastly, if you or your organisation are interested to learn more, I encourage you to use these resources or to contact our team at events at auda.org.au and we'd be very happy to support you. With that, I've reached the end of my formal remarks and I'm really happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Oh, sorry, Sophie, go ahead. <laughs> That's all right, Steph. Um, we have had quite a few questions come in. There's been a, a bit of exchange uh, on the Q&A app, but I'm going to throw over to Steph, who will, um, will manage the Q&A process. Thanks, Steph. No problem. So, um, Rosemary, we had a, and this is a series of questions that came through and comments that came through. I'm just going to try and summarise it into one question. We had a member of the audience asking, what was our consultative process that we took into account when deciding on launching .au and did we take a balanced approach on everybody's submissions? Uh, thank, thanks, Steph. I, I outlined the um, consultation uh, process earlier um, and we used an independent panel and then did um, independent market research. Um, all matters were considered, um, all perspectives were considered, uh, and it was after um, much contemplation and balancing of views uh, that the decision was taken to adopt the recommendation of the policy review panel uh, to further innovate and develop in the .au domain by launching the .au direct namespace. Thank you. Um, the next question that we had is, um, it was a, a, again a question from the audience, why are we going to launch direct registration now? SMEs are doing it quite tough during COVID, wouldn't it be better to postpone it? 
Um, on the other hand, um, what we've seen is SMEs um, come into uh, .au domain in numbers that we weren't expecting. Uh, so our view on this is that the opportunity uh, that this direct namespace will provide um, for a greater number of um, small and indeed micro enterprises is actually going to be really important to people uh, in this post-pandemic digital economy. Uh, that's ahead of us. Uh, the great interest that we saw of existing businesses to uh, set up and explore online channels registering in com.au in the numbers that they did um, was extremely interesting and informative uh, to us uh, and to a range of uh, economists uh, researching uh, the reaction of the economy to the pandemic. Uh, we see that there are very significant uh, opportunities uh, for micro businesses, uh, some of whom are using uh, social media platforms at the moment to take the step to more independence. Uh, there are a range of uh, communities uh, we, which can uh, absolutely meet the Australian presence requirement that is so important to us. Um, but could also meet the needs of their own communities. Uh, and uh, we're seeing as the uh, gig economy, if you like, uh, emerges, the um, significant uh, emphasis on uh, opportunities for um, entrepreneurs. Uh, and we think that the .au direct namespace uh, will assist uh, those entrepreneurs. So we see .au directors as playing an important role in meeting the needs of today's digital economy. Uh, and we think that the innovation that it's going to support and the opportunities that it uh, will support uh, will be very, very important. Uh, and when we've spoken to representatives of uh, small business uh, organisations, uh, they have been very keen on the launch of this namespace. That leads me to the next question. Um, they wanted to know, would there be specific um, support for small businesses to understand, especially the priority allocation process? Uh, absolutely, Steph. We're doing a lot of, we're doing a lot of work first ourselves uh, to understand small business. So we're working with the Council of Small Business Organisations of Australia very closely. Uh, we've had early conversations uh, with um, uh, other small business organisations and their representatives. Um, we've been focusing on deeper research uh, to um, tell us the priorities and needs of small business, how best to communicate with small business. Um, and uh, that suggests uh, to us, you know, short, uh, easy to understand, often video, uh, rather than uh, long and dense documents. Uh, so we're doing the, uh, the work at the moment to really prepare ourselves for this, this very issue. Um, we know that 97% of businesses in Australia are small businesses. We know that 90% of the existing domain name holders are in com.au, they are businesses. Um, so we're very, very minded about how to assist small businesses uh, to understand um, uh, their digital presence um, and to help them uh, in the consideration of the new namespace. And if I could just take a moment, Steph, to just explain, we're also thinking about um, other ways that we can support small businesses uh, in terms of cyber security, and um, simple ways of assessing the security of websites. And um, we're hoping to um, work with our registrars in terms of um, services and support for small businesses as part of Australia's overall uplift of cybersecurity capability and resilience. That's a great question. Thank you for it. Now, Steph, I think you might be on mute unless you're looking for the next question. Oh, I am looking for the next question. As I said, they're coming in thick and fast now. Um, <laughs> um, we had a member of the audience asking about anti-competitive allocation models when it comes to priority allocation. So I just want to read out a section of the question to give it a bit of context. 
So it says here, is it cheaper to say no and pay the application fee for conflicted exact match domain names rather than paying multiple applicants? This means Auda has created an inequit inequitable distribution of bargaining power between parties because domain name competitors are perpetually warehousing and restricting the supply of high value domain names for the new .au namespace by paying this annual fee. Could you just elaborate on how many of the domain names within the 3.3 million are actually contested? Um, there's a number of elements to that question, Steph. So if you don't mind, I'd rather go broader um, before I sure. get down that detail. Um, I mentioned our terms of endorsement way back at the beginning of this presentation. And um, they might seem like, uh, you know, esoteric um, philosophical things, terms of endorsement. Uh, in those terms of endorsement is a very straightforward um, direction on a matter of great importance. Um, AUDA is required under those terms of endorsement to promote competition, consumer protection and fair trading. And we take those responsibilities very, very seriously. The domain name system is part of Australia's critical infrastructure and the rules that we develop uh, put in place and then monitor and manage uh, designed to promote competition, consumer protection and fair trading. Uh, in terms of contested names, um, as I said in my uh, remarks, um, we will have uh, a very few of them. We're expecting contested names to be about 4% of our total of 3.3 million names. Uh, so it's going to be a smallish number and a number that I'm very, very confident that we can manage uh, with the combination of our cutoff date and priority category decisions. Uh, in terms of the costs, um, the wholesale costs for domain names are sub $10. Um, but what those costs cover are extremely important matters uh, that we would not uh, let go. And those matters go to the very reason that Australians trust the .au domain. And we know that Australians value being able to trust .au domain names. Uh, the processes that we require our accredited registrars to support uh, validation of Australian presence, uh, proper complaint handling processes uh, so that queries can be addressed effectively. Uh, and thirdly, and extremely importantly, uh, related security requirements. So there are a number of processes um, and costs associated with those processes and application fees are designed to uh, support those processes and um, make sure uh, that the trust that we have in .au remains very strong. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, we had another question. Somebody raised the whole privacy requirement in relation to private citizens applying now for .au direct registration and the fact that we are going to do validation via their residential addresses. They just wanted to know in relation to the secure holding of that information, would it be something that ALDA will be monitoring or managing on behalf of the registrars? Mm. Um, our own um, privacy obligations and those of our uh, ecosystem, if you like, of accredited registrars are very important to us because they are very important to Australians. Um, obligations under the uh, Privacy Act are very serious obligations. Uh, and we uh, uh, manage our systems uh, and from time to time audit our own systems to make sure that we are complying with all our obligations under the, Austra uh, under the Australian Privacy uh, Act and adopting all of the Australian privacy principles. Uh, a bit like competition, it's a, a matter that's of great import to us and a matter that we and the outer board take very, very seriously. Thank you.
I think you're back Sorry, on. I'm just, no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. I'm just seeing Bruce, Bruce is playing keyboard warrior. He's answering them fast and furiously here. So I'm just trying to get the ones that we can take. <laughs> um, we had a few questions about create dates, why they are not publicly available. Uh, I might have to throw that to Bruce, that one. So hopefully he'll stop keyboard warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, um, would you like to... That question. Would you I like to answer dates, that, yeah. why creation dates are not publicly available, please? Yeah, the, the reason why creation dates um, are not publicly available in .au is that um, sort of 20 years ago and, and at regular intervals ever since, we have parties that send uh, fake renewal notices to registrants. So they get the, the, the name address, the email address from the who is, and then they send a letter that looks like a um, like it comes from your provider that says your name's going to expire on such and such a date. And usually they charge a fee that's well above the going market rate. So um, typically 10 times the market rate. And they get generally sent to accounts payable and accounts payable of a bigger company looks at that and goes, yep, I've got a domain name and it is actually coming up for expiry on that date. So therefore the renewal notice must be real um, and they pay sort of exorbitant fees. So that's why we removed creation dates about 20 years ago. I was never going to get that one right, Steph. <laughs> no problem. Um, I might have to throw this one to Bruce again because people wanted to know what is, how do we actually check if a name is contested? Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll make available a tool um, likely um, next month that you'll be able to type in the domain name uh, label. So if, if your domain name was, um, let's say, for example, .com.au, you can type in, for example, and it will actually give you a list of other domain names that match that label. So it would come up with, for example, com.au, for example, net.au, etc. Um, so, uh, yeah, that will be a tool that will allow you to, to see that available soon. Perfect. I have a follow-up question to that one. Um, we had a member of the audience asking if the process for applying a priority access for a priority access name, is that different from the normal process of registering any domain name? Uh, yes. So um, during priority access to apply for the matching.au name, uh, you'll need to provide a token that basically proves that you're the holder of that matching.au name. Uh, in most cases, if you apply through your existing registrar, your, your registrar will manage that because they'll have your token and will be able to, to register the .au name on your behalf. Um, if, however, you want to choose a different registrar, um, then we'll have a tool that will allow you to retrieve the priority token, um, similar to how you transfer between registrars today. Uh, and then you'll be able to take that token and then choose the registrar of your choice um, to register the matching .au name. Uh, thank you, Bruce. Um, Rosemary, we had a few questions about the actual application fee. I know you did mention it in your um, presentation, why it's being charged, but could you just reiterate why an application fee is actually being charged for the priority allocation process? And certainly, Steph, because um, we require our registrars to meet very high standards under our registrar agreement um, in regard to validating Australian presence, uh, maintaining proper complaint handling processes uh, and uh, reaching uh, internationally recognised security standards. Uh, so those elements of our agreement are not costless, um, but they're very important to us um, because it's those elements that maintain the trust in .au that we know Australians really value. Um, so that's the basis uh, of the application fee. Uh, it's designed to cover those costs uh, being a, uh, and we, uh, it's uh, also a very low price. Uh, so there's uh, not much margin uh, in the application fee. It's really around addressing those costs. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we actually have a que another question for Bruce um, or Rosemary can answer this one. We had a member of the audience asking if, I, if ALDA is ISO 27001 or SOC accredited. Uh, could I just say, Bruce, you can answer that question, but you're only, only allowed to take five minutes. <laughs> uh, 
Um, out of his ISO 27001 accredited, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's quite a, it was quite a process. Um, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Bruce. It was quite a process and requires us to maintain ongoing um, vigilance, uh, if you like, quarterly meetings and uh, making sure that we uh, maintain our um, uh, standards under the ISO 27001 um, framework. And we take that very, very seriously, um, particularly now uh, in a world that is so interconnected and so interdependent. Uh, and we understand that um, uh, cyber security is a matter of national significance to the uh, whole economy. Uh, so it's very, very important that we operate at that level uh, and that our um, partners, our registrars, uh, operate at the same level. So we've been putting a lot of work into that um, over the last uh, few years and we will continue to be ever vigilant and at the leading edge of cybersecurity um, performance. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, Bruce, I know you did answer this question in the chat, but um, I think it would be good to actually mention it to everybody. Could you just explain the eligibility criteria for a .au domain name? Yes, the eligibility criteria for a .au domain name is that uh, you have an Australian presence. Uh, and for businesses, usually that can be shown by um, having a um, registered business with either the Australian Business Register, which you'll have an ABN number or registered with the Australian Securities Commission and you'll have an ACN number. Uh, for businesses that are just starting and, and are not big enough that they've um, registered with the government for tax or otherwise purposes, uh, then we're essentially treating that um, similar to, to an individual uh, and then that individual will need to provide identification and there's several forms available. Um, the most obvious ones would be driver's license, um, passports, birth certificates. Um, there's some more, uh, if it's a, a, uh, somebody that's not an Australian citizen, they would provide a um, evidence of permanent residency. I, I believe there's a visa or certificate available for that. And then we also include a few other more obscure ones, such as shooting licenses and other things. So there's, a, there's quite a list, but um, essentially you, you need to be able to provide evidence that you are um, Australian. Thank you. Could you please just list all the different suffixes um, that would be able to apply for a .au, like .au, .netau, all of them? Yeah, but basically the, the simple um, rule is that if the, uh, if the domain name is registered in the .au registry and you can see that domain name in a Whois service, uh, then it is eligible to apply for the matching .au name. So that includes .au, .netau, .orgau, ASN for associations, ID.au for individuals, um, EDU for education providers, Gov for government. Uh, then there's also state-based um, namespaces, so Vic.au for Victoria, NSW.au for, for New South Wales. So basically, if, if you can find the name in the registry um, and it's available in uh, Who Is service, then you will be able to register the um, matching.au name. Thank you. And then uh, just another one, what information would be displayed in the who is? Uh, the same information as currently displayed for a um, comma you name. So it, it will include the um, contact um, and registrant contact and technical contact information, typically their name and their email address. Uh, it'll include the information that um, it's associated with the legal holder of the domain name license. So that's usually the legal name of the license holder, the uh, government ID for that license holder, so the ABN or ACN number, the type of license holder, whether it is a company or sole trader or citizen uh, in case, and it also includes some additional information. So if it was a trademark holder, it would have the um, name of the trademark and the trademark number. So. All that information is in the WHOIS. Thank you. A quick priority allocation question. If you have multiple applicants in a category one status, so you've got get your .net.au, get your org.au and get your .com.au all in category one, 
would it be possible for the getyour.net.au applicant to auction their rights off to any one of the other applicants in that category one? Yeah, what, what, we, you're not auctioning any rights um, because the ability to apply for the matching.au name is actually tied to the underlying name. So it, it is possible before the applicant applies, so if I'm a current holder of say a net.au domain, um, I could transfer that net.au domain license to another um, party and, and that new party would have access to the priority token associated with that domain name license. Once you apply during the priority application period, um, once the name's been applied for, then the um, license is essentially locked at that point. So you can't trade the license at that stage because um, the name is held during that priority period. After the priority period is closed um, and it's clear who's applied or not applied for names, um, you will be able to uh, transfer the underlying license uh, and um, you know, the, the rights associated with that underlying license would transfer to the um, new license holder. Um, one more question. This is more a practical one. If a person has registered a domain name in 2012 and somebody registers a domain name in 2017, they will both be in priority once the priority one status for that specific domain name. Um, they wanted to know: Will there be? Will they? Will a communication go out to both of them, and then they have to com communicate between each other? Would it be managed between somebody or by somebody or would they have to do it themselves? Yeah, essentially in, in the case where there's multiple applicants for a category one name, um, their registrar would inform them um, and particularly at, at the end of the application period, you'll be informed on whether your name has been allocated. In other words, you applied for the name and, and um, it's been allocated to you or at the end of that application period, you'll be informed that actually there were several other um, eligible applicants um, and you'll be able to see the list of who they are so that's say it's a comma you and a net are you um, and then if you wish to resolve the contention you'll be able to use the information available in a who is that gives you the contact details for the registrant um, and if those registrants have their own websites then no doubt you'll be able to get contact information from their website as well um, and so it's up to the registrants to contact each other um, if they wish to resolve that contention. And then this is the last question for now. Um, we will try and get back to the people individually with some of these questions because they're quite technical. But could we just reiterate the charge for a priority allocation? Yeah, application? so the, 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 um, the, the, the fee, if you like, the application fee at a wholesale level is the same as the registration fee for a .com name. So the wholesale fees are on our website. Um, in the case of the wholesale fee for the application, it's the same fee as the comma you name. Uh, and the application fee includes one year of registration. So for most applicants, I think Rosary mentioned that, that of the 3.3 million names, only 4% actually in contention. So the, the majority, sort of three odd million people um, when they apply for their domain name, they, they will immediately have the name registered in, your, in their name and that application fee will cover one year of registration. Thank you, Bruce. I'm going to hand back to Sophie now. Sophie, you're on mute. There we go. Always a technical issue. Thanks, Steph. Um, uh, thanks uh, go to Rosemary for her presentation today uh, and to Bruce and Steph for managing those questions as well. Uh, yeah. And of course, thanks to you all. Um, sorry, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and thank you to everyone for those questions. As Steph said, it was a really lively session. There are a few more questions. We will absolutely endeavour to come back to you on those. 
Um, as I also mentioned at the start of this session, this is the first in a series of webinars that Outer intends to hold. So the next one will be on Monday, the 25th of October, with Fergus Hansen from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, uh, looking at the international cyber landscape and where Australia sits in it. Uh, then in November, we're also hosting an event for Scam Awareness Week, looking at scams and identity theft. Uh, and in December, we're looking forward to filling everyone in on some research work that Outer has undertaken on the digital lives of Australia. So please stay tuned. If you're interested to hear more, check our social pages or our website, um, and there'll certainly be links to register for those events. Uh, we really hope you'll join us again. Uh, and of course, you can also join as a member and you'll be kept well up to date with all of Outer's activities on webinars, but also really importantly, .au Direct as, a, as we move towards launch in March next year. Uh, Rosemary, did, I'll just throw back to you for any closing remarks. Oh, thanks, Sophie, and I'll just be very brief because I know we're right on time. Um, I just really wanted to thank everybody um, for participating today um, and for the full gamut of questions. Uh, I know looking at the numbers, we didn't get to them all, but we really appreciate them because your questions today will help us um, do better in the implementation and uh, successful launch of .au Direct. So really, really appreciate your engagement. Uh, and looking forward to keeping the conversation going. Thanks very much, everybody.